I think you I think at him saying either that or I can take it. And you said I said no, and I put it in front of you. That. Well, if I have if I have one, you you move it back. If I have if I have one if I have one drink, could we move on? Yes. And he takes it. Takes a drink. Now, and do we cheers cheer. before that? That would be good. We have one drink? Okay, here. So please, and roll sound. And boom up. Boom up. Boom up. Boom up. Okay. Okay. Ready and action. Honey, I hate it when we fight. Good morning, Mr. Stark. Sorry, I'm not mad. I'm just I said I was sorry. Thanks. I don't want to hear you. I don't, you, you don't you respect yourself. You oh, definitely boy. know you don't respect me. If John recognizes that the script is a skeleton. The comic book is a skeleton. You know, what we are creating is real life. So he allows it to grow and to improv and to become something alive and three-dimensional. I want to, I want to be sober, fresh. Okay? I know what I'm doing. I live for this. This is business travel. I've got a throttle between my legs going, you, you know, know hopping Just for my... Do what you want to do. Just leave me alone. <clears throat> Join me. One drink. To business. I said no. To the future. To the Air Force. Will it get you to shut up? About the time that uh, we cast Robert Downey Jr., I was thinking about the house and trying to figure out what kind of design it should be. And even though we had decided on this kind of angular, flat, metallic, hard-edged look, the idea that Robert Downey Jr. has a... He, he comes with a certain vulnerability with him and uh, it may sound strange but we redesigned the notion of the house after casting him I thought that he would be more suitable in something that architecturally mirrored who he was a little softer inside a little bit more susceptible a little more vulnerable there was a certain vulnerability about him so I thought round is nice it's more elegant and it, uh, it just seemed a little bit more womb-like The first half hour of being in the Iron Man suit is like um, the coolest Halloween you ever had, except you're alone in the trailer before they call you on a set or whatever, or you're getting ready and you just catch a glimpse and you go, that's right, grandma would be proud. And then because it's not really, it's designed for guys to wear, but I'm not a stunt man. And most of the stunt men aren't doing, you know, 65 scenes in the next three weeks. Most of them are young enough to not have a teenager at home. It was tough and as the and as we went further and further along I realized like I could wear the suit all the time, but I can't wear the suit all the time and be an effective actor. I'm sorry, did that interrupt your flow? I guess this is a draw. In the last couple weeks of shooting I was like, you know what? I made it this far, I need to sleep, I want to eat pasta, I don't care if I'm puffy tomorrow, don't put me in a t-shirt, kiss my ass, I did all that stuff because then the job is you drop the saddlebags and you just, you charge out of Dodge City, you know, because you want to get out without getting your ass bit by a rattlesnake. Now it's time for both of us to go. That's the law of nature, Tony! Here we are out in front of Caesar's Palace, the third movie I've done here. And uh, we're exhausted. We're doing a death split, which means you start at midnight and go into the next day. We tried to turn around. Everybody stayed up as late as they could, gambling and partying last night, and tried to sleep all day. I, for one, was not able to sleep all day. And I have to act and direct today. So. This could all go to hell in a handbasket on our last day of principal photography. But here we are, this is the big finish line. We always knew that if we got here, we'd be in good shape. So it's a bit of a celebration. It's gonna be a fun scene. We're gonna start outside, then go inside, and here he is, Tony Starks. Tony Starks. I'm just saying, we don't need sleep, we got talent. That's right. Hey, work it, work it, work it. Winner is. I'm just so proud of everybody and, and satisfied and the whole deal. I mean, in my psyche right now, it's that thing of like someone was saying the last day of high school and you know, 
you kind of just can't wait to throw your hat up, but then you're like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And um, I just remember last, you know, October, November, and meeting John regarding this, and then screen testing, and then pre-production to me. Like, most of us were burnt by the time pre-production was done, because we, we prepped ourselves into a tizzy. And then there's starting in the first two weeks in the cave, and then going to Lone Pine, and then Edwards Air Force Base. I mean, it's the problematic thing of looking at a at a schedule or looking at what your anyone looking at what their life is for the next three months. It's like this can't be done. Thank you, everybody. You know, every movie has its uh, trials and tribulations. We did encounter a snowstorm in the middle of a desert in the cave scene, which was very odd. Uh, we did have sets that blew away and blew down. But it, it actually, the movie uh, uh, gods were with us most of the time. And uh, while it was always daunting, it went fairly smoothly, which was great for our first production, very important for our first production. Ladies and gentlemen, John Favreau, director of Iron Man. That's a testament to John, to the crew that we put together, and for the cast, who were always game, who could always maneuver through whatever circumstances were thrown at them. And, you know, we did. We came in uh, on time and under budget. Yeah.